Legacy is a concept I've always been fascinated by. How do you build yours? Where do you start? Who remembers you? And for how long? For me, I've always thought of a legacy as what you produce from your mind, your life's work, and the intellectual properties you leave behind. When I decided I wanted to make a film about my Nana, her life, her struggles, her childhood to present day, it dawned on me. This was about legacy. It wasn't just her life, but the life and death of every other person who influenced her, was related to her, and who shaped her into the person that she is. Everything that has ever happened in human history that resulted in her becoming her. The earliest documentation of this that I could find was actually not a member of her family, but a member of her husband's family. My papa, Eugene Beauchene's great-grandma and great Grandpa Vane. This photo dates back to 1830. I know, crazy, right? When I did the math and discovered how old the photo is, I was amazed. It's truly astonishing how in 1830 these two people took a photo together, and then nearly 200 years later their great-great-great-grandson found it amongst thousands of other photos and decided to use it for a school project but I'm getting ahead of myself now. Let me take you back. Marceline Farrar was the second oldest of five daughters. She grew up in Vermont, married her husband, Ronald J. Lambert, and had her first child in 1938. Throughout her life, Marceline would give birth to 19 children, 17 of which would go on to live full lives. In 1949, the middle child, Teresa, was born. She grew up in East Wallingford, Vermont, went to Wallingford Elementary School on the weekdays, and spent her free time playing with her little sister Jo, one year younger than her. Down the road from her lived Eugene. Born in 1943, he always acted as if the older Lambert boys were his brothers. He got into a myriad amount of trouble with them. A story I remember my Nana telling me when I was little is one where my papa and her brothers built a go-kart. They built it out of scraps and took it to a big hill at the end of their road. The boys would make sure the road was clear and then go barreling down the hill in their makeshift death trap while Teresa and Joe watched. My Nana and Papa dated in high school. Gene graduated first. He wanted to go into the Air Force like his brothers did, but they wouldn't let him in due to his colorblindness. So he got a job as an engineer. Teresa graduated in 1967 and got a job at Sylvania. It was around this time, I think, that they started holding family reunions just to keep in touch with each other. Teresa and Jean married in 1969, and nine months later, they had Diana, my mother. They lived in a small house in Vermont, just the three of them. As their family grew, Jean and Teresa realized they needed a bigger home. With new baby Paula in their lives, they searched for a place to put their new house. They settled on Pembroke, New Hampshire. Jean, with a couple of his buddies, built the house from the ground up with cement, logs, and some drywall. Within a year, they had a home. As little ones, the girls got along all right, playing together, sharing toys, taking dance lessons, and celebrating Christmases. A memory that my mother and her sister share is having their hair cut into perfect circles. They hated my Nana for it. She says that it was easier for them to have bowl cuts than for her to deal with brushing the hair of two fussy kids in the morning. The kids went to Sunday school, Teresa and Jean worked long hours. Once or twice a year, they would take a short family road trip up to Storyland or Santa's Village, like most other New Hampshire families. A story I hear every once in a while is how Paula brought home a stray dog named Benji. The family wasn't too keen on Benji, telling of how he had mangy fur and how, quote, you just kind of felt sorry for him. But Paula loved him and Benji loved her, and he lived a full life alongside the cat, Jenny whom I've never heard any complaints about. At Diana's junior prom, she brought along her boyfriend, who was a few years older and had already graduated. She tells me all the time how he didn't want to be there, thought he was too old and too cool to hang out with a bunch of high school kids. It wasn't for a few hours that he actually agreed to get up and dance with me when he realized that he actually liked to dance, the night was nearly over. Graduations came and soon both the girls were off to college. In college, Paula met a man named Joe. It wasn't until they began and dating that they realized that Joe grew up right down the street from the Beauchesnes. In 1999, at age 25, Paula married Joe. Two or so years later, Diane
Diana and Jason discovered they were pregnant. My mom tells me how she was four months pregnant and going to New York to spend Christmas with my dad's family, and the whole ride there she complained about not having a ring on her finger. Imagine the look on her face when the next day he takes her to Niagara Falls and gets down on one knee. I was born on May 30th of 2001, almost three weeks after my due date. They named me after my dad's favorite uncle, who had passed away. My mom says that they finally chose the name after she had a dream in which I came to her as a baby and told her to pick the name. Although she also says that I had a beard in that dream, which I guess is some insane foreshadowing. I was six years old when my Aunt Paula had her first kid, a daughter named Ansley. Then, just over two years later, came Calloway. So, where does that take us now? Well, Paula and Joe are preparing to move to Germany this summer. Teresa and Jean are still living in the log cabin that Jean built over 40 years ago. Diana is a nurse, Jason is a biologist, and me, well, over time, that little girl grew up into this young man who is now speaking to you. I met a girl, fell in love, am finishing high school, and am trying to make it as a young filmmaker. So, now that you know the story, back to my main idea. That legacy is much more abstract than the amount of money you had when you died or the things you left behind. It's the people you've helped. Hurt, influenced, loved, lost, forgotten. It's you seeing Diana's old dance recitals, Paula's pets, learning the school that Teresa Beauchene went to, and the names of all of the Lambert children, Mary, Albert, Dick, David, Jeanette, Fred, Joanne, Ken, J.R., Sandy, Bobby, Cindy, Debbie, Irene, Teresa, John, and Lori. It's someone finding this film 300 years from now, and sharing with me the same feeling that I caught seeing that old photo of great-grandma and great-grandpa Vane. It's all of that and more. It's this. This is our legacy.